Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike, and we continue the dark path to hell to Satan's chicken nuggets with Leatherface, with Texas Chainsaw, with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation. Hey guys. <laughs> Literally shit pickles and tart per toots. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm saying, man. Hey, y'all, now listen now. These fucking old movie reviews don't do Jack Diddley dick for goddamn views, all right? So if you like this, if you want to see more older movie reviews and stuff, just share this on your fucking Twitter space squares.com. All right? It helps us. It does. All right? Fucking shit shoes. Now we're reviewing all the movies in this series, including a live stream Wednesday night for the remake, which Jay will do with me at 8 p.m. Eastern. So we'll see you guys there. This movie's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> it's crazy. And my opinions of this are actually going to shock some people, I feel like. Uh, so... <laughs> And this movie starts out and it's just another just wild batshit entry in this wackadoo franchise. If you're looking for any kind of continuity of this franchise, you can just kiss that baby goodbye because there is none. Like there's just, at this point, whatever's going on here, hey, Leatherface is going to be in this bitch. All right. Leatherface is going to be surrounded by psychos and he's going to kill some people. All right. That's basically all there is. At this point, this this franchise is Ben Affleck in the town when he goes to Jeremy Renner. He's like, listen, I can't tell you what we're doing. I can't tell you why. I can't tell you anything, but we're going to hurt some people. And he's like, I'm in. That's basically us watching this movie at this point. Like, it just forget the continuity. I believe continuity is what happens when some loser on YouTube keeps flapping off his fucking flap hole about some goddamn movie. Nobody gives a shit anymore. I mean, get a goddamn girlfriend, man. You know what I mean? What's that, me? Y'all seen the clientele that walks around here? Shit, man, I wouldn't touch him with your dinghy. <sighs> Deep in the heart of Texas. The movie came out in 1994, and the first half of this movie, they were just really laying on the cheese. Like, I mean, it's comedic. Uh, these teenagers are just the dumbest assholes ever. Renee Zellweger plays Ginny, who we're supposed to believe is some nerdy girl that just once she takes her glasses off, she becomes Renee Zellweger. But she's obviously going to be the final girl in this scenario between all these assholes who you just know are going to die. So they get in this wreck with these people. They are on foot, and they, they go to this this woman's office her name is darla and she's played by tony parinsky and she's just fucking great uh she's absolutely gorgeous and she knows it and she's sitting there and she's got this boob job done and she's just constantly talking to these kids they're like hey we need help what's going on she's like you know when you have titties everything is just great <laughs> and that's basically her at one this movie's so stupid at this point that at one point someone like throws a golf ball or something through a window someone breaks the window and she's like they're always trying to see my tits and she flashes them and she's like fuck you guys and it's like you're rewarding people for breaking your windows by showing them your tits Shit. <laughs> make you want to throw up your fucking spaghetti yeah, that's the kind of movie that we're dealing with this at this point. But I got to tell you what. I mean, at this point, I was pretty bored. And it's that typical, like, the first start to hatch it. Like, well, can we fucking get to it? Like, this is, like, some of it's semi-funny. But I'm also just, let's, let's roll out fucking Leatherface now. All right, let's get into the shit. But, woo, buddy. <laughs> Leatherface in this movie, when he does show up, he is just a fucking treat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's fucking wild, man. Like, he has, like, three different versions of himself that show up. Uh, and, you know, at, at the start of it, he looks kind of like fucking Mick Foley. He's got these purple pants on and this army jacket, and he just... He, he looks like a crust bucket Mick Foley, you know? And he shows up and he's just typical leather face. And then the next scene you see him, he's got, he's dressed like a grandma. He's got like this old grandma uh, thing on. And he's wearing this old lady dress. He looks like Mrs. Doubtfire. And he even changed like the mannerisms of his mouth and stuff. He's like, oh, oh, oh hello. <laughs> he, he changes the way he acts depending on how he's dressed. And then by the end of the movie, when we get to the stupid dinner table shit, he's literally like doing his uh, goodbye horses like, would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. Like, he's not talking, but he's putting on makes, uh, makeup in the mirror, and, like, he looks like somebody who would be in the off, in, like, the audience at Oprah Winfrey. You can tell he's feeling very fancy about himself when he's dressed like this. He's kind of like, <laughs> like, I, I actually, like, enjoyed the fucking bat shitness of Leatherface in this one. Like, it had nuts, Steven. <laughs> this shit's gonna have nuts in it. Hell, man, that's what I do when the cops come around sniffing around. I just bend over, spread my butt cheeks, I say a prayer. Yeah, by the time I get up, they're gone. Now, I don't know if that's just good luck, the good Lord's work, or maybe I just got a smelly butthole. <laughs> 
but it fucking works. And I know some people fucking hate it. And if you you only want Leatherface to be just fucked up and scary, running around with a chainsaw, I totally understand that. But they're after watching three movies in this goddamn franchise, them doing something that fucking weird, I was kind of into it. And you know what? He scared me even worse. He was very much at times more the screaming, freaked out, scared kid, child that he was in the first movie at times in this movie. Like at one point, the one dude who walks around just spouting stuff from books, he was annoying. He looks like the kid from the new guy, but he, he has this cattle poker, poker or cattle electric, electric stick that you poke cows asses with. I don't know that he's walking around and he's just like hitting him with him constantly. And the way that you get let, let the taste and Leatherface has this really humanistic yell uh the guy who played leatherface in this i thought was fucking fantastic like i thought he was a fucking wild man it was played by robert jacks uh and one of my favorite leatherfaces honestly i'm gonna be honest with you man it's one of my favorite in the franchise i know that's fucking crazy but it's because the wild steps that they took with leatherface and, and darla's character i thought she was actually she was batshit fucking wild but she was kind of kooky and interesting it wasn't just some somebody like running around like they were uh, and a couple of the first early movies, like, I'm Rick Redneck, we're gonna be fucking weirdo. Like, there was different levels to her weirdness and craziness. And don't even get me fucking started on the unheralded, underrated, underappreciated performance by one Matthew goddamn McConaughey. Now, I got 10 minutes or so into this review, I haven't even mentioned that Matthew McConaughey's in it yet. Matthew McConaughey's fucking awesome in this movie, all right? He's fucking awesome in this movie. He's scary as shit. You can see that he's a great actor, like on screen, right there in front of your fucking face, man. You know, one of the kids he's about to kill is like, what are you going to do? He's like, well, first I'm going to kill you. He's like, it ain't no fucking biggie. <laughs> I mean, he just has that Matthew McConaughey-isms to his character and he fucking goes for it. I mean, if you've ever seen somebody go for a goddamn Oscar performance in a, in a Texas Chainsaw movie, it is Matthew McConaughey in this movie. I mean, he is unhinged, Matthew. He is crazy fucking Nick Cage. Goddamn, mm -hmm. Fugazi, Fugazi, Matthew McConaughey, batshit wild off the fucking leash in this movie. And I love it. I mean, I fucking love it. I mean, it's it's disconcerting. Like at one point he rips the uh, plastic bag off Renee Zellweger's head and he sits on her lap and he's like squeezing her. And I'm like, damn, he looks like he's actually hurting her. I mean, he was he was going fucking hard in this role. And it's, it's disconcerting and it puts you off, but that's what these characters are supposed to do, right? So whether I was just impressed with how far off the reservation he was in this movie, or he was actually kind of freaking me the fuck out, and there's some dumb shit to it, like he has this leg brace that's that's controlled with like uh, uh, Zenith VCR, you know, clickers. Some of that's over the top and a little bit dumb, but there's just wild ideas in this movie. Like this entire time, he's like, you don't think that there's there's wires in here that 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 they they're not hearing everything that's going on he's trying to basically they are the illuminati it's just this weird fucking crazy out there idea that they're somehow the illuminati and then this dude shows up in a fucking suit out of nowhere and he unbuttons his shirt and it looks like he's just met pinhead he's got these weird like this fucked up stomach that has like this pyramid stamps and shit on it and he's all fucked up and he walks up and like licks her face and and basically what i what i'm what I'm getting at, what I think what's going on, is that this government guy or this Illuminati guy, uh, he goes up to Matthew McConaughey to Vilmer and he's like, you have one job, don't be a silly boy. You have one job and that is to, you know, show people horror, what horror is. Uh, and then at the end of the movie, he shows up again and he's calling me. Well, we'll talk about that when we get to it. <laughs> okay, let me get this straight. So I went from a big goddamn baby that scared everybody running in my house and ain't got no goddamn air conditioning to to a guy who comes in his pants over a bucket of ice, okay? Okay, which didn't happen. I did not come in my fucking pants. Uh, to, uh, to an idiot who can only spell the word food, okay, over and over again. And now, now I just, some guy who dresses up like a woman, puts on lipstick and wants to fuck himself. Oh shit, you actually got that one nailed on that last one. <laughs> and the first half's really dumb, and it's just a typical bad horror movie for the first half. And usually when they get to the dinner table scenes in these Texas Chainsaw movies, I could give a fuck less. I'm like, damn, again? But the dinner scene here is, I'm not even gonna go in detail, because in case you guys haven't seen it before, you should watch it. It is sadistic. It is so fucked up. She gets away, and she's running, and all of a sudden, this plane, I don't know, well, before the fucking plane even comes in. This shit is just wild. Like, if you're bored watching this series, this movie, to me, is a, just a bastion of hope. This movie comes in, it's like, you know what? None of this shit has to make sense. We're just gonna throw everything at you, and it, 
it's at least goddamn entertaining, if nothing else. Like, you weren't going to get this on the right tracks. And if you're not going to be able to make it as scary as the first movie, and you don't have the budget like they did in the third movie, why not fucking do this? Um, and they just happened to hit Pater with having Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey not be stars yet and coming to do this movie. Which, by the way, they shelved it. And then after McConaughey and Zellweger became such big stars, then they released it. Uh, so we may not have ever seen this movie. So she's running away, and she catches up to this RV, and there's these two old people just drinking their Bloody Marys, just having a great old time. I want to hang out with them. Vilmer shows up as well, and the RV gets overturned. Hopefully those people lived. I'm pretty sure they did not. But while she's running away, Leatherface is behind her in his, in his beauty girl makeup, and behind him is Vilmer, and this plane swoops down. This little dust cropper, you know, crop duster, swoops down, slashes Vilmer with the propellers, skips over Leatherface, and then she, this limo pulls up, and she gets in the limo, and it's the suit guy, the Illuminati dude, and he's like, you know, I'm sorry about what happened. He was like, uh, this was supposed to be a spiritual experience for you. And what I'm guessing is going on here is that their idea was to use the Sawyers to take people like her who was timid and had not unleashed her side and was scared to like have sex or like have fun or like really just let her freak flag fly and put them through this horrific situation to kind of create this final girl bravado in them uh which she has a couple times in the middle uh and it just went horribly wrong that's just a terrible guess but maybe that's what they were going for but he's like you know where do you want to go you want to go to the hospital you want to go to the police what do you want to do and she's, you know, they take her to the hospital. And then while she's sitting in the hospital, fucking Sally Hardesty. Someone's just pushing Sally Hardesty by on the hospital gurney. Movie ends. We never fucking pick up from here. We never, this is the last movie in the original, I think. I don't know, it's so goddamn confusing. I probably got that wrong. But this movie's just, that fucking happened. And we're never going to go back and explain it. Or expand on it. That's it. That's a fucking one shot. <laughs> you know? What a wild movie. I'm going to give it a fucking seven. I know. I know. I know. I, I know how much shit I'm going to get in the comments from you guys down below. I know how much, like, fuck, how crazy that seems. But I got to be me, Jim Bob Joe. Uh, I got to be me. This movie's a seven to me. Honestly, the second half of the movie, I enjoy. I just enjoy watching that kind of fucking go for it acting, man. And it just had some cuckoo, crazy, potato chip, fucked in the head ideas. Uh, and I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. I enjoy, I enjoy the next generation. So it's like pulling up to a McDonald's drive through so fucked up on peyote and Percocet shooters that instead of asking for French fries, you're asking to fuck guys, <laughs> which there's nothing wrong with that. I wish that they wouldn't put the club I like to go to on the same corner of the McDonald's I like to go to. You know what I mean? I mean, shit, probably not even sanitary shit goes on in that building. Uh, 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 you'd fucking hate to see it next to your goddamn big mac and chicken sandwich. I hate that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, we got a 9.5 for the original, right? We got a 2.5 for part two, or maybe it was 3.5. We got a 5.5 for part three and a 7.5 for the next generation. Oh shit. And we're going to do a whole ranking after this Friday comes out with 2022. So don't forget, regardless of how stupid you think my opinion is on this movie, please subscribe, like, and share the video. And I love your fucking faces. <laughs> Well, you know, OBJ enjoys letting women poop on his chest. You know, sometimes the things you enjoy aren't fucking sanitary or good for everybody else. Okay? Like this fucking movie. It sucks shit. You suck at reviewing movies. You should go back to fucking cornhole or whatever it is you did before you showed up here going, uh, lock movies. Uh, 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 lock movies. You fucking piss me off. This movie sucks almost as bad as you do. Bye.